O God of no greater love and faithfulness, stay with us, abide with us as we walk life's road, sometimes so dark and difficult. By faith, assure us that the spirit of your risen Son walks with us, leading us and guiding us from despair to resurrection hope and filling our sorrows with Easter's joy. In Jesus' name, the victorious Lord over all. Amen. Amen. On this third Sunday of Easter, we find ourselves traveling a road that is uncomfortably familiar. Every one of us, regardless of identity, circumstance, or station, knows this road. We've lost our way on it at times. We've been tempted to give up on it, to shut down and to throw into and, and throw in the towel. Because the road is so rough. And the four words that describe the pains and the losses all of us, all of us experience in traveling this road of life, they pop up right in the middle of this, this gospel story, just read and heard. But we had hoped. But we had hoped. I believe these four words are among the most realistic and, and heartbreaking words in all of Scripture. But we, we had hoped. We had hoped the tumor was benign. We had hoped that oppression would lift. We had hoped the marriage didn't fail. We, we had hoped our son would come home. We had hoped to carry the baby to term. We had hoped for our loved one's peaceful death. We had hoped to experience God's presence in our prayers. We had hoped our faith would survive. We had hoped, yes, the burdens of life would become fewer and lighter. We had hoped speaks of a future that is not to be, a dream that created great excitement but is now dead. a promise that created faith, but goes unfulfilled. This is how, this is how the road to Emmaus begins, in brokenness and heartbreak and heartache. And of course, this is not life's only road. Thank God for that. There is so very much in life that is good and, and loving and wonderful and beautiful and inspiring and cherished. Our sunny days calling us to fall on our knees in grateful thanksgiving to God. 
But the Emmaus road is, is a difficult trek. It is evening of that first Easter day as two of Jesus' followers walk this, this road, this arduous road. Disappointment, loss, pain, and despair grip their hearts tightly. And they are overwhelmed with despondency. The Lord they stake their lives on, the Messiah they were convinced would transform the world, had died, died the most humiliating, horrendous, and godless death imaginable. It was over now. The Passover and the Sabbath were now ending. So there was nothing, nothing for them left to do but to go home, to return to Emmaus. But wait a minute. Not so fast. A companion meets them on their difficult and sad journey. And, and this companion walks with them. And this stranger invites them to share their story. And without prompting, they pour out their anguished hearts to him. The story of their faith, its rise and now its fall. They tell how high their expectations and hopes had been for their Lord Jesus. Crucified. And now, dead. They share with him their, their devastation and despair at his death. Their, their loss and grief, and now their utter confusion. And the companion listens intently. And in, and in response to their woes, the companion opens the divine scriptures to them. And the eyes of their faith begin to open. And yet, in Jesus' resurrected body, they still don't realize it's him. L l let me take a quick detour here for what, for what happens next is pivotal. The trio reaches Emmaus, and Jesus gives them the option to continue on to their homes without him, to return to their ordinary lives and not dig deeper and, and, and learn more from this man, this man who makes their, their hearts burn. And you see, this is always our choice as well as we walk life's road. If Cleopas and his fellow follower had said goodbye to Jesus on that road, the, the Messiah, the Messiah they knew and loved and trusted would have remained a stranger. They would not have experienced the broken bread and the shared cup. They would have missed out on the living hope and the undying joy of Christ's resurrection. And so it is. Jesus does not impose, does not overpower, does not coerce. We, we have the willpower to shut him out 
and to go it alone when the going gets tough. Happily, thankfully, they plead, stay with us, stay with us. And may this be, be our plea also. Now here is the greatest victory the world has ever known or will know. The most extraordinary, spectacular event has just happened that very morning. And here we find Jesus joining two ordinary followers on an ordinary road, all to lift them from their grief and, and their devastation and their despair. Jesus doesn't choose to march into Jerusalem in triumph before the religious and political leaders. Jesus doesn't host a celebratory banquet with his disciples. Jesus chooses to not set the sky aflame, ablaze with fireworks. No. This stranger and companion who is the Savior deems it most important to meet two of his followers on life's Emmaus Road, chooses to nourish his followers with his word, his body, his blood, his grace-filled presence. For whenever and wherever we make room and we pray, stay, stay with me, Lord. Jesus will never, never leave us or let us down. The church of the risen Christ is intended by God to be a secure, a secure place. We call it the space, the sanctuary, a secure place of safety and a haven for healing. We come Sunday after Sunday to meet Jesus as the Holy Spirit opens the scriptures to us and, and we meet Jesus himself back from the dead as the bread is broken and the wine is poured out. And in this church, by God's call, we welcome everyone. We welcome anyone entering our doors who are seeking Jesus. Yes, including those who are, who are maybe, maybe very, very different from us. For the family of God is a family that relishes, relishes and celebrates its diversity. And Christ Church is a place where we receive, where we receive support from our sisters and brothers in the Easter faith. And that's why, that's why I'm so very thrilled and thankful, really excited and ecstatic that Deacon Harry and our sister in Christ, Elizabeth Shear, as a licensed clinical social worker, they are offering and are leading a grief and loss support group here at the church. Anyone 18 years or older who has experienced the Emmaus Road, who has experienced loss and grief of any kind, and we all qualify, right? All are welcomed and encouraged to attend. Come, learn about grief and loss. 
and share your experience in a supportive and safe and caring environment open to all. It will begin on Wednesday, May 10th, and will continue for the next four Wednesdays, 6 p.m. through June, June 7th. I am so excited for this ministry by Harry and Elizabeth because this is what the church is called to be, a haven of healing and a sanctuary of support. Because yes, our mass roads can be terribly difficult, and therefore we mustn't walk them alone. Jesus will walk them with us if we will but invite him. And our fellow members in this family of faith will walk with us also with their love and encouragement and their support. With the risen Christ as our abiding presence and our faithful companion, our, our Emmaus roads will always, always lead from darkness, loss, despair, and yes, perhaps even the sting, the sting of death and sorrow lead to the unending light that shines from the empty tomb and to Easter's living hope and yes, to the bomb, the bomb of resurrected life. St. Luke in his gospel shares with us today the Easter story of these two followers of Jesus whose trek, whose trek begins with their hearts broken, but culminates with their hearts burning with resurrection joy as they meet their risen Lord. It's always so. As they meet their risen Lord, revealed to them as he opens the scriptures to them and breaks the bread for them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.